Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Fishing Business Podcast. I'm Angie Thompson, your host. And I want to start today by saying I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you investing the time in with me because I know it's an investment. When you choose to spend 45 minutes or an hour listening to a podcast or watching a video, it's an investment of time and you want it to pay off. There's a lot of things, many, many things out there competing for our attention. And I want you to know, I appreciate you choosing me today and right now, and I'm going to do my dead level best not to disappoint you. Hopefully, you'll leave today feeling like you learned something. Our guest today is Michelle Kilburn, and Michelle is a marketing manager at Mercury Marine. Now, if you've been around the fishing or boating industry at all, you're familiar with that brand. Actually, Mercury Marine is an 81-year-old brand based in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And of course, they're a big, big player in the fishing and the boating world. They make inboard and and outboard motors, probably what you've seen is outboard motors. Um, Over the years, I've been very impressed with the people that I've worked with at Mercury. I've known a lot of people there and uh, they seem to attract uh, really quality people to work in Fond du Lac and also the people that they partner with on their pro staff and, and, and affiliations all across the country. Just good, good people. And, you know, I think there's something for us to learn from that. You know, there's a saying that says you're the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. And so while we're listening to that today, while we're listening to Michelle talk, I want, I want you to think about that. Who are the five people you spend the most time with? You know, are they, are they smart? Are they trying to grow? Are they encouraging you to grow? Are they positive people? That's probably the most important thing. Are they positive? Being around positive people can be a game changer in your life. Let me let me assure you, and I know from experience. So again, let's think about that as we listen to uh, Michelle today, because Michelle is very, very smart. She's very forward thinking, and she's very positive. And maybe that's one of the reasons why she works at a company like Mercury Marine. And maybe that's why a company like Mercury Marine has been around so long because they hire people like Michelle. So again, just give that some thought as we go along here. Here we go. We've known each other a long time, and and Michelle is very well known in the fishing industry because she's been around for a long time, and everybody she has a very good reputation, and and she has a huge network of friends, which a lot of us in the fishing industry are friends. But Michelle, why don't we start by you just talking a little bit about your background, what you do, and how you got into the sport? Okay, so it all started back in Ontario, um, in Canada. I've been in um, the U.S. now for almost 20 years, but it all started through my parents. Um, my dad had a sales agency, the distributorship for Shimano, and he was trying to grow the brand. So my mom and my dad worked at the tournaments on the weekends to really promote Shimano. And when I was going through university, I remember they were always going to these tournaments. And obviously, fishing is a huge part of our background. We had a lake home growing up. So we were always fishing. We're always boating. And it was just a really neat thing that they were doing. And when I got out of school, um, I remember my guidance counselor said, if there isn't a job, create one. And my background was kinesiology, physiology. I loved sports marketing. So I just started getting involved with them. One thing led to another opportunities. I worked really hard and opportunities came up that there was, um, you know, someone who needed help who was running tournaments. So that's how I literally started was assisting at the tournaments. And it just grew from there. What was it? Was it a Canadian league? Yeah, it was the Chevy Mercury Bass Tour. At one point, it was GM Pro Bass. I mean, it had Basically, it was always a sponsor tagged onto it. But when I finished up with it, because I actually ended up owning the company, it was the Chevy Mercury Bass Tour. So I had a great opportunity to understand tournaments, how to run tournaments, you know, how to deal with anglers. It it was the whole process. And I think I, I sort of was outgrowing it, though, and I felt I wanted more. I mean, I was a lot younger, very aggressive, and... So this opportunity came up with Mercury, Um, their tournament and event uh, position opened up. And my husband at the time, he was doing P&A for for Mercury. And it just ended up- What is P&A? 
parts and accessories. Okay. So yeah, so he was looking after the sponsorships and marketing in the U.S., but they needed a gen- someone to do the P&A and work on the oils and lubes with Mercury. This position for tournaments and events was open for seven months. They couldn't find anyone. And I just figured, you know, what a great opportunity to now be on the other side because I used to have to deal with um, General Motors and Pizza Pizza and all these companies trying to sell them sponsorships. Right. So I learned a lot. Right. And so to be able to come on to the other side and really, you know, have a full rounded portfolio just seemed like something I couldn't pass up. Well, I so think that's a great, you know, that that's a great story. And it really kind of uh, is interesting how I'm sure I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about how that experience helped you as a marketer. Because I think people that are out there that are just fishing tournaments may not be realize what they're learning while they're there and how that can help them help a brand market. Because when you're in the field like that, you're getting a lot of firsthand information from people about what they need and what they're looking for, right? Am I right or no? No, I think you're, you're correct. And I think that, you know, anglers need to look at it as a business. And with any business, there has to be marketing. People have to know about your products. Why do they want to use your products? You want to inspire them. You want to connect with them. So I think it's really important. It's a great point. And I think it's something that um, a lot of the anglers who are just starting could really do well by understanding that it is marketing and it comes down to sales. I mean, there isn't a marketing budget without sales. So it's really important that they go hand in hand. So, okay. So you work in the marketing department, but what does your day to day look like? What is your role? If you were, how do you, how would you explain to your parents what you do? <laughs> it crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm not on more of the discipline side of marketing, which deals with metrics and all sorts of really, um, more of a discipline type thing where you really have to learn and go to school specifically for that. So what I'm, what I'm doing is building relationships. You know, we have a brand, we know that people love to fish and boat. And so what I'm doing is I am managing those relationships. So whether it's anglers that are saltwater, freshwater, tournaments and events, water ski. There's so many different elements of it, but it's basically our influencers. So I'm managing Mm -hmm. our influencers who have to do with actual fishing. How many people do you manage? Almost 2,000. Oh my God. I had no idea. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm very serious. Oh, how do you do that, Michelle? (laughs) Um... I lose a lot of sleep and I work really hard. It's, um, you know, sometimes it's funny because I go back to my kids, you know, the odd time I would take them to a tournament with me and they'd see me talking with people and doing a sponsor's row. And it was like, wow, mom, what a great job you yeah. have. <laughs> and I'm like, you have no idea. This is a tiny, tiny part of what I do. This is the fun part, right. but it's a lot of hard work. So okay. it's developing the programs. It's working with other people people on my team. I certainly couldn't do this alone. All different people at Mercury are involved in this. You know, it's what is the program? What's the process for people applying? You know, what's the accountability? There's so many different parts of it. So my day-to-day inertia is literally um, nothing to do with fishing. It could literally be any sport. Right. Um, or any event or function. It's the right. planning, the coordinating, Um, You know, just making sure that we're speaking to people correctly, that we're, you know, finding ways of accountability. There's just so many parts to it. So are you asking these 2000 people to push out a message every year? Like, do you have a, um, you know, a a concept every year that changes of this is this is what we're our priorities are this year? Yeah, we absolutely have marketing pillars. And what I try to do is align what we're doing on the competitive angling side with those marketing pillars. And right now it's go boldly. Um, You know, we really want to get that message across and connect with consumers. So I'm forever trying to find ways that I can engage and activate our team members to, um, you know, to embrace that message. So do you send out an email to 2000 people saying, Hey, so-and-so just did a great job or Hey, this is what you need to say next time. 
Well, I think we're forever trying to improve the ways that we connect with our anglers and the mm-hmm. communication. So we started this thing called the Mercury Team Connection. So anytime we have a message, anytime we have promotions going on, access to branding materials, anything and everything that is competitive angling and marketing tools for them, Every other month, we're trying to send out information to connect with them. You know, we've done pro staff meetings. We have a long way to go, but we've come very far. And um, it's exciting because there's limited possibilities. Oh, my gosh. Michelle, you say you've got a long way to go, but I think you're like a a huge leader in the industry. And I mean, (laughs) what you've accomplished is incredible. I think that's the key. Yeah, it's the key, though, always feeling like you can do more and do better. And Mm -hmm. I think that inspires me um, to the most incredible degree. Like every time the Bassmaster Classic comes around, I get so excited. You know, what can we do? How can we, you know, figure out new ways to promote Mercury and activate with the consumers? Like it's a really exciting part of the job that I love. I was actually writing that down. I always uh, try to do more and do better because I, I like to ha- take the nice little tidbit, likes little bite-sized tidbits out of the conversation and, and push them out. And that's a great one for, for everybody to listen to. Okay, we're going to take a break real quick here. But before we do, what's one thing that's not on your resume or on your LinkedIn profile that people might be surprised to know about you? I can't wait to hear this. I don't know. You know what? I've been like racking my <laughs> brain. Um you know, because there's a lot of things, because I, I tend to be more of a listener than a talker when it comes to myself, but I don't know. Okay, I'm obsessed with making cupcakes. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. You'll have to send me a picture of some cupcakes you make. But I thought it was going to be something about the Packers or, I mean, you're a huge sports fan, right? Okay, so uh, all right. It, like I said, there are so many things, but I will tell you a quick little story about tailgating. So, okay. came from Ontario, no tailgating. I know it's hard for you guys in the US to believe, but tailgating is not part of our culture. So, when I first came to the States, my real estate agent, um, you know, after we'd kind of closed on the house, said, Do you want to come to a craft show? I'm going to Milwaukee, which is about a ma- an hour away from Fond du Lac. And I said, Sure. And she goes, Okay, we'll pick you up at 6 a.m. in the morning on Saturday. Oh. I go, Well, what? I mean, I've been to a few craft shows. I said, when does it open? And she said, 11. I go, well, well, what are we doing from seven until 11? She goes, we're tailgating, girl. We got to get a good spot. Ah. We're tailgating. And that was when I said, I'm never leaving the United States of America. <laughs> I love it. You you got introduced to one of our best traditions. So I love know. it. Yes. Well, that's great. All right, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back with Michelle Kilburn from Mercury Marine. Hey, if you're enjoying this podcast, check out fishingbusinessschool.com where you can see video uploads of the podcast, as well as my blog, where I give you more practical advice on the business side of fishing. Fishingbusinessschool.com. Come see me over there. We're back on the Fishing Business Podcast, just a short break there. And our guest today is Michelle Kilburn. Michelle is, I had to write this down because it's kind of wordy. Michelle is the Senior Manager of Competitive Angling and Sponsorship at Mercury Marine. Mercury Marine, right? That's what the company goes by. Everybody knows Mercury. I mean, you know, everybody out there knows what Mercury is, but Mercury Marine is um, is the official name of your company. And that's an important thing for people that are watching this or listening this to understand. Getting the name right when you're talking about someone's brand is really important, isn't it? Absolutely. And why? Why is that, Michelle? Why is that so important? Well, because we're trying to resonate with consumers and we're trying to do that through consistency. So obviously it's important that when you're using the name, you're using it correctly. And that goes with hashtags and everything else. It's important. And don't you dare ever use the logo wrong. Because oh no, no police will come after you. Well, it's true. And separating, like we have a circle M with Mercury. And um, as I've said to anglers, the circle M, we're not quite ready to let it 
swim on its own. So <laughs> I always say you have to make sure that that circle M is somewhere connected to the name Mercury, even if it's in close proximity, um, because it is important. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. So um, I think I've, you know, I've been around Mercury for a lot of years. Um, I've been to Walleye Weekend. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and which is a big, for those of you that don't know, it's a big festival in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, which is where Mercury's headquarters are. Mm-hmm. And it's a big uh, walleye uh, fishing festival. It's really a lot of fun. I've, I've always enjoyed it. I went for several years and I always really enjoyed it. Um, but I think Mercury has an, an, an interesting and unique cultural DNA as a company. Um, what is it like to be part of the family at Mercury? Because that's what it feels like to me. I think it's, it is a family, um, especially in marketing now. I feel like more than ever, it's ever been a family. And I think that has a lot to do with our leaders. You know, we've, we have a new CMO um, over the last four to five years. And then I, in the last three years, have been the most, I would say, fortunate person in the world to have an incredible boss who comes from outside of Mercury, but has been able to very quickly you know, learn the culture and has brought us all so closely together. And I feel like it's such a team now. And that yeah. is unbelievable. It's, it's been awesome. I'm, I love hearing that. And what industry did your boss come from? Well, funny story. Um, when I heard who he was, I was doing a little bit of cyber stalking. And that was one of my questions to him. He is one of the most talented marketers I've ever met. And he has been everywhere and pretty much done everything. But he came from Redbox. He came from um, S.E. Johnson. Uh, He's he's really held a lot of incredible roles and has so much that he brings to the table. I love it when you get an opportunity to work with people from other industries, because uh, even though I I think there's so many brilliant and smart people in our industry that really know the fishing space. And I think that's what makes our industry so special and unique, but it's really fun to work with people from other industries just to hear, especially when they come from um, like consumer uh, packaged goods or that sort of thing. It's always interesting to hear what they know and learn from them. Don't you think? Absolutely. The stories are fascinating and it's been a real treat to work with him for sure. Great. I love that. I love that. So at a very high level, because I know that, um, you know, we can't get into the, to the real nitty gritty, but granular details, but what is the relationship like between Mercury Marine and its, and its pro staff? What are the marketing pros? I mean, what are the pros as part of the marketing puzzle? What part of the marketing puzzle are the pros? What I'm trying to say. I think they're an extension of Mercury. And right now, um, it goes back to the go boldly. We feel that we're trying to inspire consumers to go boldly, to follow their passions, to, you know, do that however they need to, with whomever they need to. And I feel like the pros um, really set a great standard out there as to what you can aspire to and how you can push the limit safely. And it's all about the passion. So, you know, how can you fish? What can you do? How do you make um, the lifestyle of boating part of your life? And I just feel like they are stewards for the brand. Also, I I sometimes feel they're an extension of our sales force. But we are really trying to connect more with our pros so that they can connect more with our consumers and educate consumers and give them the information they need to boat and fish to a higher level if they want to. I love that. But, and when we talk about your pro staff, it's not just tournament pros, right? No, it's, um, you know, we have guides. We have so many different influencers that do so many amazing things. Well, it it might even be so much as, you know, the bait guy. You know, if you look at South Florida, you know, he's running engines you know he's out there he's with everybody you know and so it's making sure that we have um influence and influencers in all different disciplines so water ski teams you know that are breaking pyramid records um tournaments you know it, it there's just so many parts to it um and with anglers we have you know, tournament anglers that also guide. So they do a combination of the two, right. you know, guides right. in Alaska. There's so many neat things going on in this world when it, you know, when you're talking about fishing and we're just 
really wanting to be a part of that and connecting with people. I love that. And I don't know that everybody really understands that um, it's important to you. I would think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would think that it would be important to you if there's a guy in um, Port St. Lucie who is uh, known as the big stick in that area that really can always catch them good. uh, You want him in a Mercury, right? Absolutely. Because, you know, if we're talking about him being a captain, he's going to be touching a lot of people. These guides work hard. They are probably one of the hardest working people I've ever met. They're out there every single day. And you know, as well as I, when you take any type of rec- recreational activity and you do it for a living, it's now a job. Right. So yes, they obviously enjoy it, but they're touching a lot of different people who obviously like to go fishing, like to be out on a boat. So we would really prefer that they're running Mercury. And also, you know, if, if that guy is uh, the guy that everybody knows is good, basically, then there's a certain advantage to him using your product because everybody assumes he's going to use the best. You would assume so, yes, because obviously if you're doing it for a living, you're going to want to get out to where you need to go and get your consumers back and make sure that they have a great fishing experience. So, you know, you want the tool of your engine to be working well and, and to help you know, give them an experience so you're not worrying about your equipment. And I, you know, that's one of the things that I love about this sport is that there's a lot of ways to get into it. You don't, you don't have to, there's a, I think there's a lot of people out there that would like to think that they could make a living in the fishing industry, but you don't have to just look at it as a tournament pro. You know, there are people like, there are guides, there are people on, uh, on, you know, making, consuming or creating content on social media or on television. There's a lot of different ways that you could get into this sport. And educators. That's how I feel too. There's so many, there's so many wonderful people out there who are educating the high school and the college kids who aren't necessarily, you know, top of the line, you know, they're not an Edwin Evers or a KBD and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. I have one gentleman, um, you know, who takes out, um, People who just would never have that opportunity or kids never in their life would they ever be able to go out on a boat. And these people are wonderful. They give their time, their effort to help people experience the outdoors, fishing and and being on the water. I love that. I love that you support people like that. I think that's part of what makes Mercury special. So if someone wanted to work for Mercury, either, you know, either as a, as a, as a part of your pro team or, or in Fond du Lac, if they wanted to come up and work somehow work in the plant, what's the, um, what's the best advice you'd give them on how to get in the door there? Well, you want to watch the Brunswick website. I would say Brunswick is affectionately called our mothership. That is the company that owns Mercury and they have great tools on their website where they post different jobs, but This kind of goes back to, if I may, my son, my youngest son, who's just finishing up kinesiology and physiology, and now he's going to be doing um, 22 months of college, which has a co-op program. And that, to me, for for the side of the younger generation, is an uh, absolutely incredible way to get your foot in the door, is, you know, to get into your discipline, decide what that is, and try to get into a co-op program. Um, Now, there's obviously jobs in manufacturing where that wouldn't necessarily be relevant. There's jobs in sales, like there's always jobs opening. So that would, you know, pretty much depend on what your discipline is or what it is you're interested in. Yeah, great. great. But I would also say that um, for anybody out there listening, you know, if you ever see Michelle at a trade show or at a tournament, just ask her how you can help. That'd be a good start. (laughs) Ask her how, what could you do for her that that takes something off her plate for the day? Be careful because I may just throw you something. I I have some, the funny thing, just Angie, quick about that is the mascot suits. You know, I have. Yeah. I started with three anglers who came to the classic and said, how can we help you? The next thing they were running around in a mascot suit. So be careful. <laughs> be careful. Yes, Marcus, this girl will put you to work and that's good. That's a good thing. So, okay. So that's a good, that's a good segue to the next thing. What's the most common myth? about a career in the outdoor industry? I mean, I can tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain I know what you're going to say. 
but oh, I, <laughs> I would say one of the biggest misconceptions is that you get to fish every day. Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. It's what we hear all the time, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, I think people get really disappointed. So managing expectations is hugely important when it comes to this. It's a lot of hard work that has nothing to do with actual fishing okay. or hunting or whatever your, your principle may be. But it is a good, it is a good industry to be in and good people to work with. Um, so, okay. So how do you, you know, you've been here, you've been doing this a long time. How do you learn? How do you continue to grow? And what do you do for professional development? Well, first of all, I, you know, one of my goals was to become a better angler. And the reason oh. for that is that, um, you know, I've learned what it's like to run tournaments. I've learned what it's like to be a sponsor. I have fished through my life. But what I'm trying to do now is really understand more about fishing. What is sight fishing? Right. What are all the baits? And, you know, it's it's just one of my own personal goals was to, I was trying to find ways to fulfill and to round out my resume, basically, mm -hmm. um, just for my own peace of mind. But I think learning about marketing more, like there's so right. many things that are changing so quickly with technology. So I'm always trying to read, you know, take whatever courses I can um, and challenge myself, you know, to get out there and to really right. understand what these anglers go through so that I can connect with them better. I think that's so important. You know, when we, I was part of a group that sort of put together the FLW tour when it started. And um, so as a TV, we did the TV production and we kind of changed a lot of things that people didn't like. You know, we, we were the ones who started a cut, right? So that you cut the, the field on the final day because, because there was always a chance that we wouldn't have the winner on, on mm -hmm. camera, yeah. right? And so we were all like, there's no other sport where you don't, have the winner. So we were like, we have to cut the field so we can, we can, you know, better our chances of that. But anyway, when we started that, Jerry wanted all of us that were in producer roles to go out and fish as a co-angler in a tournament because he felt it was so important for us to know, you know, what people were going through out in the boat, what it was like. And there were people that didn't like the fact that staff fished as co-anglers in some of the tournaments, but it was so important for us. It really was to learn what that was really all about. I think it's been key in my role, but I'll also say there's the opposite to that, where there's been people who we have brought on who have been so disappointed um, because they, and this is a caution, and it could, it could be for any product that you're trying to market, is that we've had some people that are so obsessed because they are avid anglers yeah. that they've completely gotten off track trying to you know, become better anglers, you know, because they're dealing with a lot of people who have product in the industry that they want or they, and yeah. it's really set them off on the wrong road. So yeah. there's a fine line there for sure. But I love that you said that because really you're a marketer who, who, who wants to learn more about the fishing end of it. And I think a lot of our listeners are people who know a lot about the fishing end of, of it that need to learn more about marketing. And I, and I think that's a, you know, that's a good match. We should all be trying to, to learn more as we go along here. Um, okay. You've been around a long time. What do you think, what have you seen as a common reason uh, for people who want to make it in the fishing industry who don't make it? What, you know, what, what is, what have you seen happen that they, um, that they don't make it? I think expectations and I think the understanding that you have to build a brand and you have to, you do have to learn to market yourself. Right. But I think that starts with building your brand because it is a business. And, and that's what I try to say to anglers. You're running a business if you're trying to do this as, as a living <laughs> and you need to create a unique brand and then you need to learn how to sell that brand. And it's okay that you may not be an expert at it, but at some point, you know, you may have to call on other people to assist. So yeah. it's putting a good team around you that can help you excel. And who, like, I, I'll give one example. Social media, I think, is very challenging because 
there's always something new. Every other day, there's something new. And then you just get sort of your, your hands on that. And then there's something new oh, again. Wow. The truth. So one of our challenges is social listening and trying to find the best tools that are all encompassing and will, you know, take into account that in six months, there might be another platform. So we have to make sure that our social listening tools can account for the changes in the industry and the additional platforms that will come that we don't even know about right now. Right. And you know, that's, uh, you're, I mean, you're, you're talking, this is my jam, Michelle. It's like you have been reading my mind because one of the very first blog posts I put on my blog was, uh, if you, if you want to make a career out of this, you're an entrepreneur. You need to realize that you're an entrepreneur and you need to treat this like a business because it is a business. Now, it is difficult for um, it's difficult for markers, marketers to keep up with all the changes in social media and the technology and the new platforms. But I'm hopeful that this, you know, this podcast will help people because I'm, I'm hoping that I can teach a little bit about how to how to actually be effective on those platforms. But I'm also hoping that I can teach people what they need to look for and what's coming up and what's, you know, what you what you need to just, you know, let go by. Um, yeah. Okay, so what, let's see, who is someone under the radar, under most people's radar, that you think is doing that well? Who's, who's doing things right right now in terms of marketing as an angler that's not the KVD, that's not the Edwin Evers or whoever? I know, it's tough because I was going to say Edwin Evers is someone who I feel has reinvented himself and adjusted Mm -hmm. Like he's a great angler, but I am so impressed with what he's been doing on YouTube and trying to educate anglers. Um, It's hard because there's so many of them. And I mean, if I look at someone like Seth Fighter, right. He's engaging because he's funny. Like there's, they all have these unique talents. Um, But I was trying to think of an up and coming and that was probably one of the hardest because there's so many and I don't, there's some that are so quiet. Like Micah Fraser is another one that I feel is quiet, but he's having success. But when I look at what he's doing, he's doing it really well, but he might not be the big personality out there, but Mm -hmm. I am really jamming with how he's speaking about his sponsors, how he's coming across, you know, he's challenging a himself to do more educational videos. Um, That was probably one of the toughest questions because there are so many of them. And I I will tell you. (laughs) Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say one of my favorite pastimes is kind of stalking them all on (laughs) social media because I love what they're doing and I, and I, it makes me kind of proud. I feel like I have all these kids out there and it doesn't matter what age they are. I love to see when they set themselves apart from somebody else, however that is, you know, they're all different and that's okay. (laughs) That is, you mean, again, you are, you are speaking my language here because for years, I have, as I've worked with anglers, you know, to better their stage presence or their TV presence or their social media presence, one of the things I've always said is, you know, you don't have to be funny like Gerald Swindle. You don't have to be a machine on the water like Kevin Van Dam. You have your own you. You have your own unique thing. And it doesn't always have to be over the top. Everybody doesn't love Zona. Everybody doesn't love Swindle as much as we you know, can't believe, but there, you know, if some people, yeah, absolutely. you know, some, Micah Fraser is a great example of, you know, a guy that's kind of knows, he seems like he's comfortable in his skin and knows what he can do and what he can't do. And he's not trying to be anybody else. No, but he's doing a really good job. And so he's definitely someone that I feel is a little under the radar, but I am very impressed with. And I think the other thing too, is that, you know, every day I get, you know, I want more, give me more. And I try to say to these anglers, you know, if, because I have a passion and a compassion for them and I want to help them, but I'm trying to say, well, what are you going to do for me? Like, okay, you want more, but it's not just about wearing our hat. It's not just about 
doing great in competition. It's about so much more than that. And it's about, you know, coming up with a plan of how you are going to show me that you're going to increase how you're promoting Mercury. And hey, it's a challenge because they have a lot of other sponsors that they're answering right. to also. Right. But you know what? They're professional athletes. And that's part mm-hmm. of their job is to figure yeah. all of that out. I mean, mm-hmm. hopefully you and I, people like you and I can help them, but that's part of the job is to figure that out. What about women, Michelle? Where are women in the, in the industry right now? Well, it's a little challenging, I will say, but um, I think that women, when I look at you and myself and Cheryl Spencer, and there's a lot of women out there doing a great job. Um, I, and, and I'm going to give you another perspective that I love about women is what's behind the scenes are amazing women. Like if I look at Robin Howell and I look at, you know, John Murray's wife and all these wonderful gals that are creating their own brands, Mm -hmm. I'm just like so proud of them all. And I think as far as the fishing industry specifically, um, women and fishing hasn't, I, I don't think it's evolved a lot, but I feel that the people who are vested are finding their niches and growing those niches. And so it's a little bit of a different question. Um, but I think there's lots of, you know, room for women in this industry, but it is a challenge and, you know, it takes a lot of hard work. Let me throw something out at you and feel free to disagree with me if you do, but, um, People have asked me a lot over my career. For 25 years, people have said, why aren't there more women in fishing? And the, and the way I've, I've see it, this is my opinion, is, you know, we see women advancing in other professional sports and it's a direct result. And so we wonder why they're not advancing in professional fishing. But the women that are advancing in other professional sports are, it's a direct re- result of Title IX, which was the legislation that passed in the late 60s that required schools to spend as much on women's athletics as they did on men. And so what you see in the basketball world and the soccer world and those those disciplines is, is women that have had quality coaching all of their life that are finally coming of age. And it's that coaching all of their life that has made the difference for them. Most of my observation is, I don't know about you, but like me, I grew up fishing with my dad. But by the time I got to be about 13 years old, I didn't see any other women fishing that I wanted to model myself after. So I went off and did cheerleading. (laughs) And so I missed, and then I came back to it as an adult, but I missed this huge gap of time that I, you know, I can say that my father was a great coach to me to teach me how to fish when I was younger, but then I missed 10 or 15 years there where I, where, whereas men didn't, they continued and they got the coaching and they kept, they kept at the sport and, and I didn't. And I want, I want to, you What do you think about that? No, I think it's true. To me, it's confidence. I think that it's really hard sometimes, like, you know, if you jump in a boat or you're backing a boat in, you need to keep at it and you need to gain the confidence. It's not that women aren't capable. They're totally capable, but it's just gaining the confidence of running the equipment and, you know, using the tools and learning. And so to me, it's just it takes wanting to do it. It takes the determination to say, hey, this is what I want to aspire to. And I will say there's a younger generation of women that I've seen that are definitely on the right track. They are creating brands. They're figuring out ways with social media, how to excel. So I'm very hopeful that we will see more women in the future in fishing. I agree. And they're also running their own boats. And I'm so impressed. I mean, all these girls that are out there just, you know, killing it with not feeling one bit worried about getting jumping in a boat and screaming down the lake. And I'm still I'm not comfortable. I I'm still think I'm going to run over something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, OK, so who is somebody outside the sport of fishing that you um, you would say, here's a, a good person. If you're trying to, to learn how to be a better marketer, here's a good person for you to watch and see how he does things or she does things. I don't know if there's a specific person, but I will say there's a company that comes to mind. Okay. And that company is Yeti. Oh, I have been gosh unbelievably impressed how they have taken basically an ice chest and made it into something that is 
unbelievable. And, you know, the, the, the way they've expanded their products, the way that they're connecting with their consumers. I mean, they're killing it on social right. media. They've done a phenomenal job. Um, I agree. And, you know, Yeti was my client and they're incredible people and all are very creative. And I think the, well, a key there that people could learn from them is they know what their brand is and they hone in on what Absolutely. their brand is in everything yeah. they do. Yes, they know exactly who they are and what they're trying to accomplish and what their goals are. So I think you can use that as an individual too. Great example. I love that you brought them up, Michelle. That's a, that's a fantastic example. Um, so what does light you up in fishing right now? Is it Yeti? What else are you excited about? What's really got you going? Um, I think it's just the opportunities I'm seeing, you know, the way that MLF is taking everything to TV, the opportunities Bass has reinvented itself. I think they're doing an amazing job. Um, it's opportunities. And I just, I, I can't say that there's one thing, but I will say that, um, I think it's endless and I think there's just so much potential out there. And I think it's an exciting time. I really do. It is. And I tell you, the, you know, all these young people coming along in, in high school and college fishing are, are very exciting, too. And, and seeing what they're doing and how they're approaching the sport is, um, is pretty exciting to me as well. Can you hear me? And I think we, we are seeing it grow. Like one of the things that is exciting to me also along your question there is that we're seeing um, our counterparts in other countries embracing fishing and seeing it expanding and you know them coming to us to figure out how to grow their programs um so there's a lot going on and i think there's still a lot to come yeah agreed 100 percent agreed okay so if you had a million dollars to spend at your discretion uh marketing for mercury what would you do you know what i want to try to find ways to connect with consumers more and to enhance their experiences. I think it's just that simple. I feel like one of the things I love are demo rides. Oh, you know, yeah. Butts and seats. Yeah. <laughs> Quote. Um, yeah, I think that I would absolutely want to find interactive ways just to, you know, connect with consumers and help them experience boating, ex you know, experience fishing, you know, one of my favorite pastimes in the whole world is being on the water. It's where I feel peace. It's where I'm happy. And it definitely is fishing, but it's just being, it's nature. I, mm -hmm. I can sit for hours and just yeah. like, so I, I want to, I want other people to understand what an amazing thing it is that we have with our waterways and that boating is incredible. And a lot of people will never get that experience. So if I had the money, I would want to try to find ways to help people connect and experience the outdoors and boating. I get that. And I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, you know, I've told people so many times that one of the things I loved the most about the Bassmaster Classic was that, um, to me, the time that I've spent with people in a boat has been the most really precious time. And and I, and I do realize that a lot of people don't get that opportunity. And I wish more people did. And so, um, you know, anything that we would do as a, you know, as a television production company or as in, in, at Bassmaster or the Classic, anything I felt like I was doing to help other people discover it was important to me because I thought it was going to improve their life. Yep. So that's exactly my thoughts. And that's exactly what I would try to do is, you know, create those experiences and help people share um, the wonderful things that come with being able to boat and be on the water. Love that. Love that. Love that. All right. Another short break. It'll be, we'll be right back. Uh, we're just going to take a few seconds to reset and we'll be back with Michelle Kilburn from Mercury Marine. I really want to hear from you to know what kind of questions you have and how I can serve you best in this podcast. The easiest place to reach me is probably at Facebook or Instagram, where you can find me as Fishing Business Podcast or on YouTube, but you'll have to search for me there by typing in Fishing Business Podcast. Holla! We're back on the Fishing Business Podcast. Our guest today is Michelle Kilburn with Mercury Marine. Right before we went to the break, um, Michelle was talking about... Um, uh, how if she, it was so important to her to try to get people out on the water. And in that, 
in that, uh, in the, when you were talking about that, Michelle, you said that demo rides were important. And I think this might be a good takeaway for anybody out there that wants to work in this industry. Demo rides are very important to boat and motor companies because it gets the consumer in the product and using the product. How does that guy at home that may not be on your protein yet, how does he use that knowledge that that's really important to you to help you and to help him have a relationship with you? I would say hook up with his local dealer. I mean, seriously, your dealer is, you know, that's the connection with Mercury, but I feel like establishing a relationship with a dealer is so important and trying to find ways to connect with them and to assist them with their business. To me, it just, it's a great way to get started. Love that. I love that. And also I would say that, you know, if you have the opportunity to get people, new people out on the water, man, take it. Don't always Mm -hmm. feel like you got to go out there and beat the water and be practicing for your next tournament or trying to develop some content. Take some time to take somebody new out and introduce them and then tell a story about that in your social media. Absolutely. And kids, take kids out. Oh my gosh. Some of the most incredible experiences we've ever had is you know, a child catching their first fish. It's absolutely priceless. It is. You're right. We need to do more of that. Okay. Quickly here before we go, who's a business person who has been influential for you and um, why have they been influential for you? You know what? I have to, I have to give kudos to Gary, my boss. It's only been a couple of years, but I have learned more from him than I've learned almost in my entire time that I've been with Mercury. Um, I feel fortunate. Um, you know, there's definitely been people along the way. Earl Benz is a person who I just adore. I think he is just a stellar human being. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's, there's been so many incredible people, right. but I would have to say Earl is definitely someone that I look up to and I really feel um, has so much integrity and so much knowledge. And he's just, he's a wonderful person and he's been a great mentor. Um, and now recently Gary, the last few years, exceptional marketer, great human being, just a stand up guy. He's, he's, he gets it. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Earl Bentz is in the boat business. He founded several boat companies and including Triton boats and has recently founded Camus boats, which is a new boat brand on the market. Gary, what is Gary's last name, Michelle? And is he on social media? Um, Gary Lancina. Okay. So it's, yeah. And he is on, he is on Facebook. Um, and he's just, a he's an incredible human being. He is, um, he's a father of twins and he's, you know, got other children too, but he's, yeah. he gets life and he's, he's just a, an inspiration and a really good role model. Well, anybody that inspires you, I'm sure would inspire the rest of us too. Um, uh, who is your favorite person to follow on social media? I don't have one favorite person. I follow my anglers and I literally, I'm not joking. It, it's not just the top anglers. It's all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love to see what they're doing. I love to see what they're cooking. I love to see, you know, what they're doing on the weekends, whether they're boating or they're doing something neat or they're picking up their boat. And I, I mean, I do follow Coldplay. I love Coldplay, but (laughs) it's, you know, I just try to be, um, you know, have a lot of diversity in my life. And uh, I'm always looking, looking for new things, looking for, you know, what, what's going on. I, I really obsess about sports because I'm always going to games. I'm going to football yeah. games. I'm going to hockey games because I want to see what are they doing? How are they engaging the crowd? What new ideas can I can come right. up with? You know, it's fun for me. It's, right. it's just, it, it inspires me. Okay, there's another really good takeaway for anybody listening at home. Um, you know, what she just said, what Michelle just said that right there is really important. I think a lot of us sometimes in the fishing world, we think that what we need to put on social media is all the big fish we catch, but it's you've got to do more. You've got to let people know what you're cooking. You gotta let people know what you do on the weekends. Are you a you know, are you a CrossFit junkie? Uh, do you love cold play? People want to know that because that helps them get to know you and feel like they want to follow you and find out more about you. Okay, one more thing. Best business advice you'd give to someone starting out in business in general, not just a, you know, 
professional angler or a tournament angler or somebody wanting to work in the business? I would say um, set goals and don't be afraid to start at the bottom. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, I feel that one of the most incredible things you can do is build who you are, build you know your disciplines, build your knowledge. Um, not everybody can start at the top. I feel that the most advantageous thing you can do is to manage your expectations and to not be afraid of hard work and dedication. If you want something, you'll get it as long as you're focused, you have incredible goals that are realistic and that you stick to it. Don't give up, be determined. Love that. That's a great way to end this, Michelle. Thank you so much for taking the time today. And um, I appreciate you a lot. And I hope we can do this again. Oh, I, it's been great. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, y'all. What'd you think about that? Michelle's pretty impressive, isn't she? She's a really, really sharp person. And I thought there was so much good take-home advice in that. I mean, really practical stuff. And um, I really want to know what you guys think. I'm dying to hear. Let me know what you think of what we're doing here. And um, let me know if you think there's somebody that or, or some kind of person that you think I should have as a guest on the show. I really want to hear from you. Send me questions. I'll answer you. I will. You can reach me at Facebook Fishing Business Podcast, Instagram Fishing Business Podcast. And on YouTube, you'll have to search because I'm not big enough to uh, have my channel named yet. But uh, I am on YouTube as well if you're not watching this there. Um, you can leave comments and replies any of those places. You can also go to the website fishingbusinessschool.com. And um, like I said, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'm here to try to serve you. So if there's anything you think I could do better, or if there's any questions you have for me, um, please reach out and let me know. Now I'm going to sign off in the way Jerry McKinnis always did on the fishing hole by saying this is dedicated to dad because he always had time to take me fishing. See you guys.